adding containers into your landscape is a great way to provide additional interest. We often use containers not only to elevate plants, but also perhaps provide a better environment for a plant that might require a little better soil than what we have in our garden. Containers come in a wide array of uh, colors and textures. And one of the big things about container gardening is we often think about how we might need to water them more. Well, there's a couple of factors to consider. And when it comes to containers, size does matter. Bigger is better. And in fact, when I go shopping for containers, I often tell people, look at what size you think you're gonna get and then actually get the next size larger. Larger containers will require less watering. The other thing you wanna think about is whether it's a porous container or not. You can see they come in an array of glazes and textures. And a lot of times that adds not only interest, but it also actually helps hold that moisture in there. We also have terracotta pots that we use a lot of times and they are porous. And so we're gonna lose some soil moisture to evaporation as that water leaches into the clay around it. Now again, if this was glazed, that would help seal that pot a little bit better. You might also have a plastic pot or something that is not porous. And this of course will hold more moisture, therefore require less watering. Now these are pretty small containers, so they will require a little bit more watering. And the next thing you're gonna consider is your potting media. Now, this is just traditional potting soil that we have and it's good for most plants, um, but you might wanna consider using something different if you're using succulent plants. Succulent plants need a little more drainage in them and so a lot of times their potting soil will have more sand and grit in it. Your traditional potting soil is composed of vermiculite, perlite, um, peat moss, sphagnum moss, things like that. And they can come in a, any number of different recipes, but most of those work for your general vegetables or annual plants that you're gonna use. We actually have some perlite down here. Perlite is the white material that you often find in your potting soil. And it's actually a volcanic rock that when it's heated, um, it expands and it's very lightweight. So it adds to that aeration um, in your soil profile. Alternatively, sometimes styrofoam is used in potting soil. It does add to aeration, um, but styrofoam floats. So when you water your pot, you might notice that styrofoam actually rising and coming over the edges of your container. Now, if you want a little more insurance for your pot when you're watering it, you can buy these uh, moisture holding crystals. Um, this is just a small bag, but a small amount goes a long way. Um, and basically these are crystals that you can add to your potting soil. And when you water your plant, they absorb a lot of that moisture and release that moisture slowly as the plant needs it. So again, this will just help increase the amount of time between waterings. Um, on your containers. Now again, the next factor you consider is your plant selection. Uh, if you're using your typical annuals and bedi uh, bedding plants, then potting soil works well. And again, you can add your soil moist. Um, but if you are looking at succulent plants, then of course they won't need as much water. So you wouldn't want to add any of these water retaining crystals to that potting media. Succulents naturally will be able to uh, be a little more drought tolerant and withstand a longer period between waterings. Finally, the next thing you might want to consider is grouping your pots together. Not only does it create a great focal point and it really highlights the pots, but it also allows for ease of watering. If you have to drag a hose around, you only have to drag a hose to one spot to get all of your pots. Not only that, but if you ever go on vacation and you have somebody come over and water your pots, again, the, it kind of gives you a little reassurance that all of them will get watered. A lot of times when you have your pots scattered around, you might miss one or two, and it's kind of devastating when you come back and see a wilted plant. Now, if this is still too high maintenance to water your pots by hand, you of course can always hook up your pots to irrigation. And again, grouping your pots together um, requires less plumbing than if they were scattered around. 
To find out more about how to hook up our pots to irrigation, we've got a couple of students from Dr. Luanella's landscape irrigation class. And Tyler, tell us how to hook up our pots to irrigation. Okay, so small tubing, also known as spaghetti tubing, is an excellent option for irrigating these pots. It supplies a sufficient flow of water, and it also is small or flexible enough and discreet enough not to take away from your plants. All right, so we have to run this through each of our pots? Yes, that... ma'am. Preferably before you put the potting soil in. Uh -huh. You will run the spaghetti tubing up from the bottom here. And most of these pots come with holes in them. So. Right, at the bottom, yes. And so you'll run it up. So this is what goes through the bottom, and this is out through the top, which hooks up to this small emitter here. Okay. So, and then that emitter also, you can kind of change Adjust the... the flow. Okay, yep. very nice. Here. This little piece here is what actually hooks in to your lateral line, which we ran off of the main line over here. Okay. So this so, will be the line that's carrying our water correct, over here to the correct. pot. This little tool here mm -hmm. is what you use. You poke a hole in it. There. All right. And this plugs into it just like this. You just push it in until you hear the snap. There. All right. You can see it's all the way in. And then the line, the spaghetti tube, which is at the bottom of this pot, plugs in right here, just like that. Then you take your emitter and plug it in here. Now you're ready to go. You just put it right in the middle of your pot, get water to your plants. And that'll create a nice little spray for us. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, so now we need to go ahead and hook up the rest of these pots real quick. Correct. All right. So Chase, Tyler helped hook us up with our pots. Can you tell us how to hook our pots to our main irrigation system now? Yes, so you see Tyler hooked it up, took, hooked all the emitters up to this pipe that runs all the way around the big pot in the middle. Uh -huh. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this, put this T and connect both ends of that. So we connect these together, and what we're doing is we're actually creating a manifold okay. to connect this back to our main water source. So we just used a T to make a loop, and we've got all our pots plugged into that loop. Yes, ma'am. So we've created our own manifold, but is there something else that we could have used? Yes. So you can buy these already manufactured manifolds, mm -hmm. and you just connect them to a pipe in the ground. and. So some of these are raised up to make it easier to connect your spaghetti tubing to your manifold. But the tricky thing about these is these are only allowed eight or six spaghetti tubes. Well, if you want to have more pots, then you have to have more than one manifold, oh, of okay. course. Okay. And so with our manifold that we have created, you can add or subtract pots and uh, it's a little less expensive than having manifolds because most of the time you have these materials laying around already. So if I do want to subtract a pot, I'm going to leave a hole there. How do I fix that hole? So what they have are these plugs called goof plugs. And what you do is you when you take where your spaghetti pipe connected to your manifold, you just add one of these into that hole and it will stop the water. All right. So are we all hooked up now? Yes, but one thing you want to make sure you do before you go, just let it go, you need to always make sure to test everything, run it, make sure there's no leaks and no pipes have busted off or need to be pushed on more. All right, sounds great. Thanks for hooking up our irrigation for us. You're welcome. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussions.